Hi ladies and gentlemen, welcome to IT Snippets. Today I'm going to teach you how to test your Windows 21H1 ISO, how to enter audit mode in Windows 10 so you can pre-install applications and really make sure your ISO is up to scratch. So let's get started. Now the easiest way and safest way to actually test an ISO is to actually test it on a virtual machine. As you can see in front of me, I'm using a Hyper-V box. So the first thing I need to do is create a new machine to test this on. So I'm going to go right click, new virtual machine. Virtual machine name will be Win10 test. Uh, I'm quite happy storing it where it is just now and that shouldn't be an issue I don't think. Go click next. I'm okay with it being generation one. Click next. So I want to give it one gig, but I'll give it, I'll give it 496, so that's four gig. I'll uh, we'll use dynamic memory as well, which will allow it to increase or decrease as required. Click next. Let's run a network connection. We'll leave that just now because I still need to configure that separately. Click next. I'm okay with it being called Win 10 Test and create a new hard drive for it, as you can see here. So we'll just going to click next. Again, this tutorial is about doing the test, not actually about the installation itself. So it's asking me if I want to install an operating system later or install from a bootable CD or DVD ROM. Install from a bootable floppy disk. So I'm actually going to install from a DVD ROM. I'm going to select ISO, I'm going to click browse, and I'm just going to map to the folder. Okay, so the image you've seen me create in the previous tutorial was called NT Lite Me. So I've selected my NT Lite Me ISO, I'm going to click open, and I'm going to click next, and I'm going to click finish. That should create a new virtual machine. Okay, so now we've got our virtual machine created. I should be able to right click and connect. I'm going to click start to power on the machine. It should automatically boot to the Windows disk, and it looks like it has. Here we are at the Windows setup, so I want me to choose my language, English UK is fine. English UK and United Kingdom, that's all fine, just click next and then click install now. It's asking me for a serial number, but I don't really care about that just now, so I'm just going to click I do not have a product key. Show me the end user license and agreement, so read through that at your leisure. Click I accept if you do agree and click next. I always do a custom setup, so it's asking me if I want to upgrade or do a custom setup. I'm going to do a custom setup. As you can see, it's set up a 127 gig drive of empty. That's fine. I'm just going to click next and let it do the partition in itself. And we'll just let that install. Okay, that's it doing a reboot just now. It should now boot back into Windows and we should get that out of box set up eventually. Okay, it's asking me to choose my language. So I'm going to try and go into audit mode, which is Control Shift and F3, and it will reboot and go into audit mode. Okay, so it's now booted into audit mode. You're probably going to struggle to see that. So what I'll do for the time being is I'm just going to move the sysprep window down here, just out of sight. I'm going to close that. I'm going to try and change the resolution. Okay, that's not bad. Let's see if we can go a little higher. No, 1080p is as high as I'm going to let me go, but that's fine. Okay. So we'll close that just now. The first thing you want to do when you go into audit mode is just be sure that it's got all the drivers it requires. So you run Windows Update. Okay, we can get to it through Windows Update settings. So that's fine. Just click on here. Let's try and maximize that just now. It says there's no updates available. I'm trying to check for updates. It's not going to work because there's no internet access at the moment. We shall have to fix that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do shut down, but the next time it boots up, I want it to enter audit mode. So I've just selected enter audit mode and shut down. I'm going to click OK and just wait for that to power down. You would normally have to do this, it's just I have not configured my Hyper V correctly. So inside the Hyper V server, 
need to click new virtual switch to be an external switch. So I'm going to create the switch. I'm going to call it internet. I could select it to use Wi-Fi or to use killer networking. I'm going to try and use killer networking. So that's the Ethernet. So click apply. Give it a moment. Hopefully that'll work. Okay. Click OK on that. Now I can go back into my Hyper-V machine. Looks like it's failing to connect. So I can remove the server. And then right click connect again. Okay, I'm going to go to the settings of my machine. Close the shit out and post. Okay, click apply. Click OK. Power it on. Okay, so asking me to set up a network adapter I just set up. I'll just make it discoverable for the time being. It's not really going to be an issue. The machine's not going to last long enough to cause any problems. So for the time being, I'll always change that to audit mode, just to be on the safe side. In case I screw something up, I'll go back down here. And we'll go back into Windows Update. Just check for updates. We'll click on that. Hopefully it should have internet now. There we go. It's found some updates that hasn't been installed, which is basically updates for Windows Defender, .NET Framework, and the malicious spyware removal tool, so it's installing them just now. It also has a optional update, but if you see there it says preview, you really don't want to install previews unless you absolutely have to, so I would say no for this. Okay, now that that's fully up to date, we shall go check our internet access and see if we can install some apps. Now you could have done this beforehand, as I've shown in previous tutorials, but you can also do it at this point. So we'll go to www.9mint.com. Okay, and here we can select what application we want to install. So I use Opera as my main browser. I use Notepad++. I use VLC, and to be fair, that's pretty much all I need from this just now. So we'll go down here, I'm going to click get your 9 8, and it should download a file, which it does. Once that's finished downloading, just double click it. As you can see, it's currently installing Opera. It will then install Notepad, and then finally VLC. Okay, so those three applications have been installed, so we'll click close. Now, while we're in here, we could do something smart. We could also de-bloat our Windows 10 image and try and make it faster. I've never tried to do this in audit mode, so let's see if it works. So we'll just try and find the de-bloater script. We'll head over to our privacy search engine, DuckDuckGo, and do Windows and the bloater. As you can see, there's a GitHub script for it. So we click on code, download the zip. Okay. We'll open up in File Explorer. We'll go in here and we'll grab all of the scripts. Just right click copy. And what we'll do is we will move them back here. Go into the C drive, we'll create a temporary folder. So right click new folder, temp, and we'll place them in there. Okay, so the one we're really interested in is the Win 10 Debloater GUI because that gives us a GUI so we know what we're doing. So the best way to run it is to right click on your start menu, go run PowerShell admin. Obviously change to the root directory and then change to the temp folder. And then in order to run it, we would do Windows 10 debloater. We'll press tab again and we'll get the Windows 10 debloater GUI and hit return. Okay. It's complaining that our execution policy is incorrect. So we can do set dash execution policy all. And then we can try that again. Okay. That didn't work, so we'll try bypass. I'll select all again and try. And this is looking healthier. Okay, as you can see, it's come up with the bloat options. So I'm just going to click remove all bloatware and give it a moment. I don't even know if this script has been tested on Windows 21 H1. I guess we're about to find out. Okay, so it says it's finished all tasks, that should be done. We shall make sure Cortana is disabled, make sure Edge PDF is disabled, and I want to enable the dark theme, as I prefer it. 
It gives me the option to uninstall OneDrive, to unpin tasks from the start menu, disable telemetry and tasks, and remove bloatware reg keys. So, I'm going to remove the bloatware reg keys. And removing this stuff will make for a faster install. Okay, and I'm also going to disable the telemetry and tasks. So that should now be a de-bloated version of Windows that now has our custom application. So we can close that just now, and we can close that, and we can close that, and again. Now, because we did some Windows updates, what we're going to want to do is change this to enter audit mode again and do a reboot so that the operating system does its additional actions. OK, now we're back inside Windows. There you can see we have the desktop icons for Edge, Opera, Notepad and VLC, but I don't really need the desktop icons, so I'm going to delete them. Now our image is ready to be generalised and then created into another ISO. So in order to do this, we click Generalise and we shut down the system because we will have to power it up in Windows PE and then capture this image. So next time it runs, I do want it to enter the out-of-box experience. So select that and click OK. In order to capture this image, we're going to have to boot into Windows PE or Windows pre-install environment. So we'll have to go into the settings of the machine. And then down here where we're pointing to our Windows image, we have to change that. We'll click Browse and we'll select the Win 10 PE image. If you don't know how to create a Win 10 PE image, I have a tutorial on that, that I have recorded previously. So I'm just going to click Open on that, click Apply, OK. And I'm going to start that up. I'm going to press Space to boot from the CD. It probably won't let me change the screen resolution here. So no, it won't let me change the screen resolution here. So you're just going to have to bear with me, unfortunately. A stretch, does it help? No, it doesn't let me. OK. So if I change to the C drive and do a DIR, there's nothing. If I change to the D drive and do a DIR, you can see that looks like our Windows install. So I'm going to clear the screen to make it easier for you. Let's see LS rather. And to capture the image, I'm going to use DISM slash capture slash image. And I'm going to say image file colon and then the path I want it to go to and the file name. So it's going to be C colon slash 21h1 dot win in a space then slash capture there. Colon, C colon slash, but that's not right. It's going to be actually I've made a mistake. It should be D colon slash over here. So D colon slash space, and then I need to give it a name. It's an American keyboard. I'll call it Windows 10 21 H1 dash no eight. Okay. So I'm saying DISM, that's image capture tool. I'm telling it what to do, capture dash image. I'm telling it the image file I want to create, so d colon slash 21h1.win. I'm telling it the capture directory, so that's the, the drive that I want to capture. In this case, it's d colon. And then I'm giving it the name, Windows 10 21h1 dash no bloat. Hopefully I've got that correct, hit return. And I've not, so I'll clear the screen. And as you can see, DISM has kicked in, the deployment image service and management tool. And we'll give it that a moment and it will create a new image. So the operation has been complete. I'm going to see if I can map a network drive and copy this over to my NAS. OK, it looks like it let me map that drive successfully. I should have a Z drive. I'll change the Z drive to DIR. That is my NAS. So I can then do copy D colon slash R dot W I M to Z colon slash. Why didn't that work? Ah, uh, because it's D colon. So, and it's now copying my 21H1 WIM across. Hopefully that shouldn't take too long. OK, now that that's copied across, I'll log on to my NAS and check. And as you can see, it's copied across and it's 8.1 gig. So now what we can do is we can power off this virtual machine. Shut it down. That failed to shut down. OK, close that just now and just stop it. If you like this video, give it a like. If you dislike this video, give it a dislike too. If you get feedback in this or any other videos or suggestions for videos you believe we should do in the future, then please let us know in the comments below. And most of all, thank you for watching.